Show wasn't good yesterday, guys. I'll own it. Sometimes you'll go one and four, especially after hitting 67% for about three weeks with our free plays on the show. I know the last few days, we haven't been hitting 67%, but by the way, the Power Five is still on a 78, 54, and five overall run. I'll take that over the long term. I'm also number one in football this season. So far at wagertalk.com, hitting 68% combined in NFL and college, not to mention number one in soccer since April with a 67% record. So what I'm saying is, We're due for a big bounce back today. Let's get it started. As a reminder, you can always comment down below with your thoughts on these selections. Number one, A's Cubs under seven and a half. I've been on the under each of the first two games of the series. Lost on Monday, but the under was the only win on yesterday's show. Lower total for Wednesday's matinee. It is a 2.20 Eastern time start on getaway day at Wrigley Field, by the way. And as I've been saying the last two days, the Cubs average a full run less per game here at home compared to on the road. That may not sound like much. However, when you consider where they rank in scoring, fourth on the road, 25th at home, yeah, those ranks, those rankings, the split is pretty dramatic, guys. And I don't mind the lower total this afternoon because we've got Justin Steele on the mound for the Cubbies. He's been a bit of a power five favorite this season, hasn't he? Uh, Now, Steele is coming off the IL. I'm aware of that. He last pitched on August 27th. But his last five starts, not only all ended up as Cubs victories, but Steele posted a 2.02 ERA in August. By the way, Oakland is bottom five in the league in runs per game overall. The Cubs are number two in fewest runs per game allowed at home. Oakland... How are they countering? Because we don't expect them to score a lot, obviously. How are they countering Steele and the Cubs? Well, they're setting out Brady Basso, the young southpaw, who has done an excellent job, quite frankly, of transitioning out of the bullpen. He has not allowed a single run in his two starts, which have seen him go combined 11 and two-thirds innings. As I've said before, I like both bullpens here. They definitely held it down last night. So under 7.5 it is for A's Cubs. San Francisco Giants Plus one and a half on the run line versus Baltimore is our second play on the Power Five today. Guys, something just isn't right in Birdland as the Orioles have dropped eight of their last 11 games. During that stretch, they're averaging less than two runs per game. My word. So love the idea of getting that one and a half run head start with the Giants here. That'll cost us around $1.50, but I think it's worth it laying the juice there. The Giants, they won 10-0 here at Camden Yards last night, behind Blake Snell and four relievers combining to allow just five hits. I think the Giants have the starting pitching edge again this evening with Hayden Birdsong, who tossed five shutout innings his last time out. Now, I know Baltimore's Dean Kramer's 3-0 with a 2.62 ERA his last six starts. However, for the season, Kramer has a 4.28 ERA and 1.39 whip here at home. I do not trust him. I do not trust Baltimore laying one and a half runs here. So Giants run line is the play. 635 Eastern is the first, is first pitch time for this one. Five minutes later at 640 Eastern, the Dodgers and Marlins will get underway. How about trying the under again? Yes, this play was an abject disaster last night as the team's Ended up combining for 20 runs. The over is now an insane 52, 20, and 4 in Marlins home games this season. But do I care? No, I don't. Miami is the third lowest scoring team in all of baseball still. I think Dodgers rookie right-hander Landon Knack takes care of them. Knack has a 3.00 ERA and .96 whip this season. He was a bit shaky his last time out. But the last three starts for Knack all have stayed low under the total. For Miami, Ryan Weathers is coming off the I.L., To make his first start since June, that's a tough spot normally. I I get it, but especially facing this Dodgers lineup. But Weathers was having a solid season before getting hurt, including a 2.15 ERA his last five starts. Again, I'm gladly going to take the under here. It's a numbers play. We're getting a key number of nine. Not sure I would play this at eight and a half, quite frankly. I just don't think these Miami home games can keep going over at this ridiculous rate. Nor do I see the Royals getting swept at home by the Tigers on Wednesday. So I will back KC as underdogs of plus 120 or higher on the money line. I know Tariq Skubal's pitching for the Tigers, but I don't think his presence alone is enough to justify the odds makers pricing for this one, especially since Skubal has struggled each of the last two times he's started against the Royals. He's allowed a total of nine runs in 11 and a third innings. Been harping on this all season. The Royals are a much better home team. Uh, I know they've lost the last two days, but look at what they do at the plate at home versus on the road. They walk way more at home. They strike out a lot less. 
uh, here at Kauffman Stadium. Uh, I've been through all those numbers previously. I also think Alec Marsh is up for the task of starting opposite Scooble here. Marsh has allowed two earned runs or less in five straight outings. He had a career-high 11 strikeouts last Friday, which was his last start. Let's also keep in mind Detroit has hardly been dominant in this, these first two games. They won 7-6 to six on Monday after trailing by four runs, and then they went in extra innings last night. Royals went off as $1.25 and $1.53 favorites in those games, respectively. I think we're getting good value on the home team here in a desperate spot starting at 740 Eastern, so I'm back in the Royals' as home dogs. Last play for today's Power 5 is one I think you're going to all like, and that is under 8 in Blue Jays. Rangers would play it down to 7.5, and, and that's because we've got what should be an excellent pitching matchup here. Bowden Francis versus Cody Bradford. Francis has been simply spectacular of late. This man has allowed just one hit in four of his last six starts. He's taken a no-hitter into the ninth twice during that stretch. Last time out was a brutal beat for Francis and anyone who had the under in that game against the Mets. But thankfully here, the Blue Jays are facing a Rangers team, uh, a Rangers lineup, I should say, normally isn't very potent. Now, I understand they just scored 13 runs last night, okay? So that really contradicts what I just had to say. But for the season, Texas doesn't score a lot at home. And Francis has allowed just eight runs total since the start of August. Toronto's problem here, though, is obviously not Francis. It's that visiting teams are averaging just 3.82 runs per game in Arlington this season. That's third fewest in all of baseball behind the Mariners and Cubs. So don't go expecting the Jays to score eight again like they did here last night. Bradford, he's a lefty. Toronto's got a bottom five batting average against lefties this season. Bradford has also allowed three runs or fewer in every home start this season. Let us now recap the Power Five in case you forgot or missed anything. Number one, A's Cubs under seven and a half. Number two, San Francisco Giants plus one and a half on the run line versus Baltimore. Number three, Dodgers Marlins under nine. Number four, Kansas City Royals plus 120 or higher on the money line against the Tigers. And number five, Blue Jays Rangers under eight. Again, feel free to leave any comments and or questions down below. Drop your favorite bets for Wednesday if you'd like, or you can just tell me, uh, that you didn't like what I did on yesterday's show. I don't care. I just love to see you guys participating with the show here on YouTube. And if you haven't already subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Not only do I do the Power 5 daily, but you can catch me and Mark Zinno every Monday through Friday doing the morning wager. And I'm going to be on first pitch alongside Dan Alexander and Adam Trigger today at 11 a.m. Eastern live. Don't forget, NBA right around the corner. Guys, can't believe that. I mean, it's just a, the season tips off in about a month. And for just $595, you can lock in for the entire season. You will not get a better discount all year. Last season, I finished number three at Wager Talk with 45.28 units of profit in the association. So head on over now to wt.buzz slash bp to get locked in for the 2024-2025 NBA season. Should be another good one. That does it for Wednesday's edition of the Power Five. I hope you enjoyed it. Smash that like button if you already uh, haven't done that. Until next time, let's cash some tickets.